There are some really dumb uses of AI. For example, I was trying to find a real dressmaker on Etsy, and instead I kept finding this. Like, clearly, this is not a real person, and this is not a real dress. So what do I actually get if I order it? This guy just turns into an evil version of himself with a surprise man bun. This outfit defies physics with a kind of M.C. Escher construction, so clearly that's not what I'm receiving for $133 in the mail. When people point to stuff like this and say, AI is a revolution, I'm just like, that's stupid. All the money being poured into tools people don't actually want seems to make AI a bubble. Great. But the stupidity of that AI bubble is just a distraction. The problem is, as a genuinely complex system, AI is hard to explain to finance bro investors. That would take time. And time is money. The people generating the hype have latched on to the least interesting parts. But there have been some very recent, genuinely society-changing developments in AI. And I think no one is paying attention because of all of that unrelated, idiotic hype. Really smart people I know are pretty dismissive of AI. The most common thought I hear about AI these days is, AI is nowhere close to artificial intelligence. It's just a dumb tool that is maybe good at a few specific tasks, but that's it. Point it at something new or outside of its context, and it will fumble. And that was a totally reasonable take as of two or three years ago, but it's really changing. There are recent discoveries that change how AI can be used, and they're really important for everyone to understand because they're going to affect everyone. Unfortunately, they take approximately 12 minutes to explain, so I'll try to do my best. There is hype, but hiding in the background, there's also the future, whether we're prepared for it or not. So as of five years ago, the best way to think about the utility of AI was as a very effective way of storing and retrieving information. This is kind of like how a hard drive full of books is smaller and faster to access than like a whole library. All kinds of information is stored in these models as concept fingerprints or embeddings. For example, a mountain lion is an animal with a lot of information. In English, there are multiple names for mountain lions. The model can save all of these names to the same conceptual fingerprint. Mountain lions have names in other languages. These can be saved as well. This is kind of how translation tasks work. When you want to translate from English to French, Puma maps to this specific fingerprint, and French is retrieved. Other aspects of mountain lions are saved as well, in how close this fingerprint is to similar ones. For example, mountain lions are more similar to cats than they are to bananas. As of around three years ago, these models went from only handling text to starting to incorporate images, sounds, other modalities of data, making them multimodal models. Now, the images of mountain lions the sounds of mountain lions, all are also added to this concept fingerprint. You now have a kind of platonic ideal of a mountain lion. The importance of the concept fingerprint is that actually saving all of the text about mountain lions, all of the images, all of the recordings, would be incredibly expensive. Not only would it take up a ton of data to store, but it would also take a long time to sort through and give a response on if the model was queried. The concept fingerprints, or embeddings, allow for just the general fine lines and broad strokes to be stored. That's why you generally couldn't get a model to produce a real, specific mountain lion picture, or a specific quote from text, because that wasn't what had been saved. Although, if something is common enough, it can be memorized verbatim. When you hear about the idea of training one of these models, the training may be referring to the conversion of raw data into these embeddings. For example, for a vision encoder, I might pass in a photo of a mountain lion, and if the model labels it banana, I will penalize it. But if it labels it mountain lion, it is rewarded. Over many epochs of training, eventually, the muddy chaos of raw information will compose itself into these structured, platonic ideals of information. Which is honestly kind of beautiful. Even though just storing the concept fingerprints is cheaper than storing literally every paragraph mentioning a mountain lion, every picture, every video, it is still very expensive because these concept fingerprints potentially span everything on the internet. Let's use another metaphor for concept fingerprints. 3D art models for video games or animated movies. 
3D models seek to represent the visual information of what is being modeled. You can think of the size of an AI model as similar to the resolution of the 3D model. The largest model may be able to render every single hair, the reflection of the light in the eye, tension in the muscles. A very small model might be like a very low resolution cat, barely recognizable as a cat. The very large models are interesting, because they can have incredibly high fidelity representations of real things. But similar to a very high resolution fancy cat, they are going to be very slow and expensive. If you put your fancy cat in a video game, it will be very expensive to calculate how all those hairs should be moving along with a cat. Your computer will have to do a lot of math and will probably lag. Your shitty cat will move around great, but the overall experience will be not great. Distillation is the idea of using a very, very large model to create a better version of a small model. This larger teacher model can teach and distill the details into a smaller student model. Instead of using the resolution limitations you have to make a shitty cat, you can use those same pixels to make subtle cat. This cat will render well in your video game, but is also very recognizable as a cat and is fairly high quality. What has changed in the last few years is that distillation is becoming better and better. Smaller and cheaper models are becoming more usable in more contexts, more affordable and higher quality for the price. And distillation is nice, I mean, it's a super cool principle, but while it fixes some of the major barriers of cost and feasibility of AI adoption throughout the economy, it doesn't fix the most glaring issues like model hallucinations and just general clunkiness. These models are just tools, they spit out uncritical responses, but distillation does enable a big leap forward. So you might have noticed a quirk in models. You might ask a question and it will give you a response. And then if you ask if the response is good, it will sometimes backtrack, recognize its mistakes and give you a new response. You might reasonably ask, if the first response was wrong or bad, why didn't it just give you the correct response the first time? It's the difference between pattern recognition and actual understanding. Without specific prompting, the models by default will often just sort of fill in the blanks uncritically. It will just pull from the embedding space and sometimes it will just be wrong or make up connections. But when you ask them to critique themselves, you are asking for something different. One of the big recent advances has been model thinking, getting models to actually go through the intermediate steps of reasoning through their answers, instead of just pattern matching a reasonable output. And it actually works pretty well. One limitation of a single model thinking is that bigger models will just be better at it. And it's expensive to run bigger models. The real groundbreaking advance is combining the power of thinking and the affordability of distillation into agentic model frameworks. Agentic is just an adjective for agent. I didn't name it. To understand agentic model frameworks, let's go back to the 3D model metaphor. Let's say we want to render a really complex process like a banana bread factory, because we want to be able to ask questions about different parts of the system. If we have a massive model that perfectly renders the factory, we could maybe ask, what does the machine do with the eggs once they are inserted? And it will correctly, but very expensively say, it shakes them. If you ask the question to a small model, it might just fill in the blank for the question and say, it cracks them because that's what one does with eggs. If we add thinking to the model, it might expensively say, the input is connected to the section labeled shaking, so it shakes them. If we have a very cheap model, it will say, that's a great question, you're so great, I'm just a model and I don't know how to answer your question, but if I did, wouldn't that be so great? So what if instead we take multiple cheaper models and give each of them part of the system to focus on with some overlap? agents, if you will. And what if we add them all to a conversation and ask the question? And what if we add in a few extra agents? For example, an agent whose job it is to specifically suspect and catch when other agents hallucinate, an agent to look up information on the internet to validate other agents' claims, an agent to organize the discussion and determine when the final answer has been reached. This orchestration of thought, it turns out, is super, super effective. Each individual agent is a dumb tool, yes, but together, especially by explicitly adding critical agents specifically trained to spot their own fuckery, 
you can suddenly get really useful results. A synergy, a gestalt emergence, if you will. The difference between humans and AI for a while has been that AI is obviously better at information retrieval. It has stored all the information. But humans are much better at problem solving, thinking outside the box, being usefully proactive. These new agentic systems have the power to actually solve very complex problems that the old single models would just not be able to. And they can do it fairly cheaply because they are distilling in a way where each agent is fairly high quality for its task, but is also a reflection of all of the learnings of the very, very large models they were distilled from. It's extremely powerful, and the possibilities for how it can and will be used are patently not hype. This agentic AI research is really profound, and I don't really hear people talking about it. I suspect it's because everyone has been inundated with AI hype from loud idiots. And I mean, we have a lot going on these days in general to take our attention. But it is super important that you don't get distracted by the incredibly dumb AI being pushed literally everywhere and miss the coming of the new AI behind the scenes. This is purely my opinion, but I suspect a big reason why we haven't seen the AI revolution yet is really in large part because all of the big AI companies are so focused on putting so many resources into staying ahead in the AI race. Why invest in making a product now when whatever you make will be ancient in three months? That doesn't mean it's not coming. That just means it will be more effective when it does. Another thing I hear people say a lot is, well, humans will always be better than AI at X or Y or Z. But even if that is true, humans are not cheaper than AI. We live in a society and most businesses run based on finance. If a human can do a task correctly 90% of the time and cost minimum wage, and an AI can do a task correctly 60% of the time, but cost cents per hour and are much faster, and they're so cheap, let's say you have 100 AI agents all doing the same single task together. So if you pick the best result, that raises the success up to even 80%. That's still a pretty obvious business choice. AI is not just Snapchat filters and premium LinkedIn generated comments. Anyone else tired of the AI police on LinkedIn? I see M-dash and that's how I know it's AI. Gabe, I agree. I agree 100%. Thanks for sharing, Gabe. Gabe, I'm one. It can do incredibly useful things and also profoundly terrifying things. It's becoming less like a basic tool and more like a group of special agents able to solve complex tasks to achieve their goal. And the goal could be helping to diagnose and treat people with chronic complex illnesses or suppressing online dissent. Even if you specifically can't influence how AI is used, it's important to understand, recognize, and prepare for because it's coming, whether you're watching for it or not.